five. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take how your family, your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest and repeat offender, Karen Hall's with us. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning, Ron. How are you? Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly at 800 306 1990 Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Well, I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money. I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And yes, of course, we are celebrating today. Now, this one here might have been National Martini Day, might have had this one beat on for me. But today, fairly, fairly close. Not a whole lot behind is this one. National Chocolate Eclair Day. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I could go for that one. A little, uh, <laughs> Karen, do you like those? No. You're not, not a chocolate eclair person? No. <laughs> okay, we'll stay with the martinis. Uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, we're going to move right along and see what else we've got going on in the news today. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the news. We haven't got the full report yet. But it's very interesting listening to politics once again. The, set, the Democrats in Congress, they're on fire once again. I mean, it's nothing new. I mean, we know that no matter what happens, what, what the Republicans say, that the Democrats are going to be on fire over it, that the world is coming to an end. You understand that this one? This is ridiculous. And it's, the same goes the other way. So it's not all one-sided. They, they both look at the world the same way. If, the, if one side is for it, by definition, the other has to be against it, regardless of what the issue is. But yesterday we heard, now, now nobody knew what was in, everyone was complaining on two fronts, that they didn't know what was in the Senate Republican health care bill. Being done in, under secrecy, nobody had any idea what's in it, but it was the world's worst pro piece of legislation. Now, I don't know how it can be both the world's worst piece of legislation and you don't know what's in it. How does that work? But only in Washington, D.C. can something like that both be part of the narrative. But that is, that's the way Washington is right now. So let's move on to today. Well, now they come out with a bill today. And, and guess what? It's still the world's worst piece of legislation. But they're upset that they don't get to debate it. Well, if you read the, the cover page on the bill, it says that this is a briefing discussion document. They haven't even come out with the full bill yet. That's 142 pages of briefing discussion document. Doesn't that mean they have time to talk about it? I think if they call it a discussion document, that's probably something that means they want to talk about it. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just a simple guy here. But I do know that based on the health care bill coming out or the, the proposal of it, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 29 points, oil up 54 cents a barrel. The 10-year Treasury down a little bit, down one basis point, 2.153. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that based on the results that came from Chapman University or the discussion at Chapman University yesterday. But we're looking at, and if you look at all the healthcare stocks, the insurers, now most of the insurers, they've been getting out of the marketplace, so they're not doing anything at all. The insurers out of the marketplace because they knew that Obamacare is imploding. Now they're coming back and their stock prices are up anywhere from 25 to 4%. 
What do you think is causing that? And I know that I've got some friends on social media that tell me that the president has done absolutely nothing, and I understand that. But this is all about forward-looking. That's what the stock market is. It is a forward-looking vehicle trying to predict what the future will bring. It does not look and say, what did the past bring? Now, next week we'll hear a little bit about the past when we start listening to the numbers on earnings. But that's an issue there. We've got to deal with, but uh, we're going to stop. Oh, come on, guys. Now let's stop that noise. Uh, I got a little background technical issues coming in there. Feedback. I don't know if you were able to hear that, but there, that's what the, the stock market is, forward looking. Unless we look at earnings, which comes out next week, we're always dealing with the forward issues. Okay, so now let's move right along and see why is it then that healthcare, the healthcare stock providers or the insurance providers are all up between two and a half and four percent right now. Well, they're looking forward. They're, they're excited about what they're seeing on the horizon. Now, if you were at Chapman's forecast update yesterday, well, maybe you weren't so excited. GDP, they revised their outlook on GDP from 2.4% to 2.3%. And not a huge difference right there. It is what it is. But if you look at the model, which... You know, so there are some um, technical people like me, statist statistical people like me. I did serve on the forecast, and I won't tell you how many decades ago I served on that forecast. But the model actually projects something closer to 1.8% as a GDP growth. Why would that be happening? Well, a lot of it has to do with our population. Old people like me are continuing to get older. I, I think that's a good thing, but some people would not agree. But our population, 15 to 64-year-olds, growing at an anemic rate of 0.4%, which is down, 20, the growth rate is down 20% from 2015. Not good news for a, if you want to see the economy grow. GDP growth hinges on increased productivity and where's that going to come from if you don't have that many new people coming into the marketplace? Well, that increased productivity they're talking about coming from tax reform and regulatory reform. Now, again, the folks that, that like to, to chatter about this, regulatory reform can also mean getting rid of regulations. So it's not like they sign something new into legislation. They get rid of all the hindrance to productivity. I've told you many times that in the mortgage world, now we know what's happening in the, in the mortgage world. We know what's happening in the real estate world. But I have talked to many, many mortgage bankers, owners of companies, and they're telling us that the mortgage rates would be 1% lower one full percentage point lower. And I'm going to tell you right now that the Freddie Mac number came out this morning at 3.9%. Hmm. That's the Freddie Mac Mortgage Market Survey. Last year, 3.56% at this time. Last week, it was 391 So it's down a little bit. Nothing to just really worry about. But these owners of the mortgage banks say that if you qualified for that 3.9%, if we didn't have all the regulation that came in in the last administration, we'd be looking at a 2.9% 30-year fixed rate loan. They figure one full percentage point for compliance. They are hiring more lawyers than loan officers. That's the issue in many, many of these companies. Now, what is happening now? What's going to change? Well, the issue that's going to change significantly is the Federal Reserve. Under the last administration, the Federal Reserve was very, very easy on their policy. They increased their balance sheet by three and a half trillion dollars. Three and a half trillion dollars, yes. It went from about one trillion to about four and a half trillion. They increased their, their interest rate, their discount rate, maybe once or twice during the eight-year Obama administration. They've already done it three times this year. So think about some of these numbers. What does that mean? Now, the Federal Reserve realizes that under Alan Greenspan, they were blamed for having their policy way, way too easy. And I don't want to get too technical or too much into the wind, but here's the issue. If their policy is too easy, if they make money too available, they believe that they can be creating an asset bubble. Think stock market 21,000. 
They don't want to do that. So they're going to continue increasing interest rates, even though they're not seeing inflation. They're not seeing a lot of job growth. They're not seeing a lot of GDP growth, but they're going to do that anyway. They're also going to decrease the size of their balance sheet. How are they going to decrease the size of their balance sheet? Well, they're going to stop repurchasing the mortgage-backed securities that they've been owning. They're going to stop repurchasing the bonds that they have. That's going to increase the supply of both of those. It should bring the pricing down, yield up on both of those. That's their idea. Now, what else do we hear from Chapman University? Payroll. Think about this one. Here's a big issue. So the California payroll employment went from 2.6% to 2. And they're forecasting in 2.6 in 2016, forecasting 2.1 growth, 2.1% growth for 2017. Why would that be happening? Well, we went from construction employment of 9% to now we're just barely over 2%. That's going to really hurt the economy. Those are high, good paying jobs. But there's not a lot of growth out there still. Why is there not a lot of growth? Well, the, remember I told you that that 0.4% growth in the 15 to 64 year olds? What do you think is happening with the 65 and pluses? Yeah, they're voting with their feet. They can't afford to stay in California. They can't afford the taxes. They're going to Florida. They're going to Texas, where they don't have the same level of personal income taxes. Our net population, our net migration, is a negative number right here in Taxifornia. So these are more numbers that just came out. If you want the full report, give me a call, 800-306-1990. Now we move right along into what else has been in the news. i got to love this one. I, I just love looking at, at some of the issues coming out from lawmakers. They're pushing for a $15 federal minimum wage. $15. Yeah, it's not smart. But what do they do? It's kind of like what they did with Obamacare. Do you remember Obamacare? They came out with this law that you and I had to adhere to, but they didn't. Well, what have they done? $15 minimum wage for federal minimum wage. What are they doing? Yep, they're hiring unpaid interns. Think about that concept. Now, I am a big proponent of the intern program, of the apprentice program. I'm not a big fan of hypocrites. And if you're telling me that I have to pay $15 an hour minimum wage, shouldn't that be the same rules for you? Just a thought. But then again, maybe some of the Democrats, they're starting to review, I guess, in Georgia when they spend $30 million to lose. Maybe they're starting to realize that maybe the old lady should be put out to pasture. I think there's a song about that somewhere. Uh, but they're talking about that it might be a little past the prime for Nancy Pelosi and you know that she's not going to go without kicking and screaming. But look at the bright side here. Under her tenure, the House has lost 64 seats. I should give us a little... So I know who's asked to kick. Yeah, House of Representatives lost 64 seats under her tenure. Now, one other note that did come out of the Chapman forecast, and then we're going to get on to the rest of our broadcast. We should be anticipating that there's going to be more and more obstructionism from the Democrats in Washington. Why? Well, history tells us that in the first year of a presidential administration, going back to 1966, the average loss of representatives is 29. The, average, the, the incumbent party loses 29 seats on average in the first year of a presidential administration, the first in the uh, first uh, interim election. Now, that'll still keep the, the Republicans in control. But I don't think the Dems want to lose another 29 seats, or even worse, they don't want to follow President Obama, where he lost 63 seats. Damn! Yeah, 63 seats lost in his the first uh, interim election after his election. By contrast, President Bush 41 gained eight seats. That is the news from the Chapman Forecast. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, self-directed IRA stories, successes. We're going to hear from Karen Hall about that, the importance of home equity in retirement planning. Should you get a 40-year mortgage? The most undervalued cities in America. We have got a ton to talk about. 
So we're going to get on with it. You can reach us anytime. Off air number 800 306 1990, 800 306 1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. What if your family business could help clothe a less fortunate family? Or your restaurant could feed truly hungry people? What if you could help to comfort the lonely? Plant sustainable resources where nothing has ever grown before? Or make a child's lifelong wish come true? What if all you had to do was simply do nothing more than what your business already does every day? Would you do it? Introducing Processing for a Cause, a unique program that turns a percentage of your business's credit card volume into ongoing donation dollars from nonprofit organizations and foundations. Simply switch your credit card processing provider to Processing for a Cause and begin supporting a worthy cause today. The process is simple and the cause will change lives forever. Processing for a Cause. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations. MLS 21037 and DR number 0186945. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. In the Mortgage Minute today, being brought to you by Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, any mortgage, Gold Star has the programs for you. Just give me a call, 800-306-1990. I will put you in touch with somebody at Gold Star that can be very, very helpful to you. Should you get a 40-year mortgage? Mm, what do you think about that one? You know better than that. Well, here's my issue with any of these these specialty programs like that, a 40-year mortgage or whatnot, is 
I am a big fan of minimizing the amount of m payments or cash you're putting into the mortgage. I want you to put your money into other avenues that are going to get you a better rate of return. Now, what is a better rate of return than a mortgage or home equity? Believe it or not, almost anything, because the rate of return on home equity is zero. No matter what anybody wants to tell you, it's a mathematical function. Now, you can argue whether you want to make, you want to pay off your house or not. You can do, have an emotional discussion about that. But regardless, home equity, the, the return on investment of home equity is absolutely zero every single time. If your property is going to appreciate by by 5% this year, or in the case of what Chapman says, somewhere around 6 or 7% this year, regardless of how much you owe on the property, if you have a 100% loan, or you have a 20% loan, or a zero loan, no loan at all, that property is still going to appreciate at the exact same number. So get the money out of the property and put it into a safe, secure investment. That does not mean a car. That does not mean a boat. That does not mean a vacation. It means going into safe, secure investments. And there are a lot of them out there. And talk about 6%, 8%, 10%. I can show you every one of those, or not. maybe not every one of them. I can show you a number of them. More than enough to, to satisfy your desires. So just give me a call at 800-306-1990. The bottom line, do I believe that a 40-year mortgage is good? I have no problem with it at all. The, only, I mean, the longer, the better. And 15 and 20 year mortgages, 10 year mortgages, I am not a fan of those at all because basically if you want to put your money under your pillow, go ahead. That's what you're doing with a 15 year, 10 year mortgage or paying off your home. That is the Mortgage Minute. So let's chat about investment opportunities and one of the ways of dealing with your retirement. Hopefully you're going to get there. Hopefully you're going to be one of that, those people in that 64 plus group that they were talking about at Chapman yesterday. And you have a IRA that you might want to invest or maybe you're leaving a job and you want to move your money into something that you have more control over. Karen Hall is here to chat with us about it. Good morning. <laughs> hey, good morning. How are you? I am doing wonderful. So let's talk about some opportunities of self-directed IRA. Excellent. You know, one of the things you talked about, the 64 plus market, it's growing. We call it the silver tsunami and we've got the, the 64 plus market growing at... Now, does that make me a tsunami or what? You're a tsunami. -er. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you're not there. But, but the, the baby boomers uh, growing at something like 10 million a day or, or 10 million a 10, week. 10,000 a day. Yeah, yeah. It's That's the number 10, I've heard 10, anyway. a day. That's it. Yeah, the silver tsunami. 10 million a day. Holy cow. 10, 10, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I only right. had one cup of coffee. So yeah, 10,000 a day. For the next 10 years though, right. you know, we got this, yeah, that's why it's a tsunami. So it's it's coming at us with, and for the first time ever, I think there are more people that are in that age bracket than in the like zero to five category, you know? Right. So there yeah, we go. Our, our household size is, is shrinking. Right. And we have to prepare for retirement. It's something you don't want to talk about sometimes because it's like, oh, it's later. I'll just put it on, kick the can, who cares? But, but, we, but we can prepare for retirement. And that's what self-directed IRAs help you do. Not just invest in the stock market. Um, and I'm sure you've heard like John Oliver's expose about how when you invest with financial advisors, not that there's anything wrong with them, they're great, but sometimes the fees can really take a big chunk out of your retirement amount. But when, well, you when I was at Merrill Lynch yeah. way back in the 90s, the, the goal at Merrill Lynch, and I, I, I share this all the time, and I guess now it's really come to pass when they've done some of the reports from Stan O'Neill, who kind of oversaw Merrill's demise. But the goal at Merrill Lynch was not to ever make anybody money. The goal at Merrill Lynch was to help people not lose their money. Okay. Which I could put my money under the mattress and not lose it, I hope, right? <laughs> right. It's, so, I mean, the self-directed IRA. Well, you get 100% of the return on your asset. We don't participate in, in, your, in the gain of the asset. You know, so that, that's great, like, like, your, like your financial can, advisor may. Can you pay if, um, for financial advice or, or guidance when you've got a self-directed IRA? Uh, of course. So, so you have, maybe you, you are dealing with a registered investment advisor. Maybe you're dealing with somebody like you, Ron, who understands real estate. But self-directed IRAs are for assets like real 
real estate, like um, notes, you know, secured and unsecured loans, and maybe deeds of trust is what I'm talking about. And precious metals, people put like gold, silver, palladium, that sort of thing in their self-directed IRA, the actual coins. Um, or, you know, or, or one huge um, asset class is also private stock. So maybe you're going to start a company, and I take my IRA and I have a debt or equity position in your company by making a loan to your company, or be my IRA becomes a member of your LLC. You know, so then, so we, these are things you can do with an IRA that you can't do with a typical IRA. A so that, that, if I'm understanding correctly, then if, you know, like when they talk about, I, I'm a fan of watching Shark Tank. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Kevin O'Leary constantly talks about taking <laughs> a, um, a royalty or a position in some, you know, in some of these companies where he'll, he'll lend them money and take an equity stake. There you go. Could he put that equity stake into a self-directed IRA? No, it's not like that. So, so what, the only thing you can put into a self-directed IRA is a, like a contribution. You can contribute and those contributions okay. are limited. You can, but say for example, you've been working at a job and now you've got this big 401k and you leave that job. You can take that 401k, roll it over into a self-directed IRA and invest the money that way. But you don't, you've got a, a cap on how much you can contribute. Gotcha. Okay, and and I would suggest, and this is just, I am not a financial advisor any longer. I'm not a registered representative any longer. I did have those licenses. That was in the days when Merrill Lynch told us we couldn't tell you how to make money. We could only tell you how not to lose your money. I am a big, big proponent. If you are leaving a job, get your money out of their 401k and move it into something that you have control over. It could be a, the self-directed IRA is a great vehicle or a rollover IRA if you want to do that. Two things there. Number one is get it away, from, actually three things. Get it away from the company you're leaving. Not that there's anything wrong with that company or that 401k, but you have more options the other way. If you do the, the whole world opens to you if you take it out and roll it over into something else. And the other issue is diversify. You might want to put some of if you put it in a self-directed IRA, even in that vehicle, don't invest everything into one item. Think Enron. If you're old enough to remember that day when people put all their money into Enron, right? And we're not giving right. financial advice, but a lot of people yeah. lost everything. Right. And and. and so diversification is important, of course, and we, we're not advisors. They're self-directed right. IRAs. So you come into, uh, you, you come to us, you want to open a self-directed IRA, you've got some asset you want to invest in, maybe you heard about an opportunity, and then you open a self-directed IRA, and we're the vehicle to go from here to there, you know? Right. And, you know, one of the things that I like uh, doing uh, on the broadcast, especially when we've had somebody who we can go back and say, you know something, if you want the nuts and bolts of the self-directed IRA, just go to Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, and you can search for Karin on our, on our channel. Karin's been on several times and given us the nuts and bolts. But what we're going to do today is we're going to... We're going to go to story time with Karin. <laughs> How's that? Once upon a time. <laughs> story time with Karin. We're going to talk to you that when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. We'll also talk about the importance of home equity in retirement planning. See if that contradicts what I just told you about home equity at the start of this, this segment. And the most undervalued cities in America. We'll talk about all that and more. You can reach us anytime. Off-air number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 at 800-306-1990 or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Your credit score over 
over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your Jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Eagle Housing Lender. Do you own real estate or have assets over $150,000? Do you know one of your heirs will be the probate courts and the IRS? If you don't have a living trust, you will go through probate. Call Heritage Financial Services toll-free at 1-855-434-7400 for a free review. Check us out on Facebook, Heritage Financial Service in Lake Forest, California. That's 1-855-434-7400. Again, 1-855-434-7400. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. Just checking out the Facebook live stream. Glad to see that Chad's on the line with us this morning. Robin, glad to see you this morning. Uh, I got the bride on there watching. I better be careful of what I say because the bride's on with us this morning as well. Uh, Checking out the real-time real estate segment brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. So the idea here this morning, the importance of home equity in your retirement plan, that is the subject of today's real-time real estate segment. Home equity, the, the one of the big issues of home equity, and I'll share this with you, and there's a, I got a whole story we shared on our social media channels this morning. But one of the biggest issues of home equity, it's forced savings. And we often discuss the difference in family wealth between homeowner households and renter households. Much of that difference is the result of the equity buildup that homeowners experience over the time that they own their home. In a report recently released by the Nonpartisan Employee Benefit Research Institute, they reveal how, reveal how valuable equity can be in retirement planning. Craig Copeland, senior research associate at EBRI, recently authored a report Guess what it's called? Importance of Individual Account Retirement Plans and Home Equity in Family Total Wealth. And I'll quote him, Individual Account Retirement Plan Assets plus Home Equity represent almost all of what families have to use for retirement expenses outside of Social Security and traditional pensions. I don't know too many people that have traditional pensions anymore. Those families without individual account assets typically have very low overall assets, so they have almost nothing to draw from in retirement expenses, or for retirement expenses. The report echoed the findings of a working paper, Home Equity Patterns Among Older American Households, authored by Barbara Butrika and Stepuka 
Mudraz, Mud, I can't even say it, of the Urban Institute. Fannie Mae highlighted these findings in their blog, The Home Story, this past winter, quoting those two, and I'm not going to try and say their names. For most adults near traditional retirement age, a home is their most valuable asset. Dwarfing retirement accounts, other financial assets, and not other non-financial assets, although relatively few retirees tap into their home equity, having it provides financial security. In fact, many retirement security experts argue that the conventional three-legged stool of retirement resources, social security, pensions, and savings is incomplete because it ignores the home. Have you ever heard that one before? USA Today interviewed two area experts to comment on the EBRI report, Randy Burns, a private wealth advisor with High Point Planning, they agreed Social Security and home equity are major pieces of the retirement puzzle. Professor Wade Faw, professor of retirement income at the American College of Financial Services, authored Reverse Mortgages. How do you use reverse mortgages to secure your retirement? He says, Home equity is a very important asset for American retirees, and so it is important to think about how to make the best use of home equity in retirement. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Whether you use the equity in your home through a reverse mortgage or by selling and downsizing to a less expensive home, it is a crucial part of your retirement planning. That's the real time. Real estate segment. Brought to you by Nest, the area trusted real estate professionals. Text NEST to 79564. So since we're talking about retirement and we're not there yet, let's talk to Karen Hall, you direct <laughs> IRA services. You direct. You direct IRA yeah. services. Let's talk about some, you know, Karen, when we, once we get past the, yeah. the nuts and bolts. Like the rules. The rules, yeah. right? Right. And I always try and figure them out and I still know the, I know every single I know the answer to every rule that there is when it comes to IR, your, your self-directed IRAs. Yeah, yeah. And I know to call a car in. There you go. That's the answer. That's, that's my answer. answer. <laughs> that's my answer to understanding those rules. Yeah. So very, very simple. Right. Right? So let's, we got past that. Let's hear a story or two. Okay, once upon a time. <laughs> okay. There's this man I wish named... I had some sleeping music here or something <laughs> like that. We don't want to put people to sleep. Right. But there's a man named Joe, and he lives here in Southern California. He's a great guy. And Joe um, was working for a large company. Okay. And so he was kind of in a forced retirement, but he was only, he was in his 50s, and he had this big 401k. Well, Joe became a real estate uh, agent and became a real estate investor, and he thought, well, you know, why should I um, keep my money in the stock market when, when the asset class that he knows best is real estate? So what he did is he took his 401k, rolled it over into a self-directed IRA with us, and began to invest in, in real estate properties. And of course, as a realtor, he's out there seeing things that are not on the market yet and so forth. And, and so he invested in a couple properties. And now, where he was previously worried about his retirement, what was he going to do when he turned 60, 65, you know, and 70? And starting to retire. Now he's used real estate to build up his his uh, portfolio and he's getting cash flow and it's growing and growing to the point that he feels comfortable now about retiring because the money's there. So he's dealing with, with the, like, I, like you said, his asset, his knowledge base. Correct. And with self-directed IRAs, you have to invest in what you know best. So Karin, how does that work then? Because He's investing in something that he knows, and you said he's what in his fifties, yeah, early fifties, right. like whatever. Fifty-nine, I think he is now. Yeah. Okay. So, how does he live? How does he? How does he get money to to sustain himself? He's a realtor, and okay. so he makes commissions off of selling real estate. Now, can he make? He can't make a commission on selling the real estate that he's buying, though, can he? Correct. He has to keep it arm's length. So the, the, the transactions, his IRA can buy and sell real estate, but he's not. he can't act as the agent okay. uh, on, on any of this because he can't receive any personal benefit. Right. So he's not acting as the agent, but he gives it to someone else in his office, and they do it. You know, they, they handle it. The, the, but, so, but he can do the, if it's other transactions. So he's out there, and if he sees a, a piece of property that he wants to buy, yeah. he can go to his friend and, and write an offer through his friend. Sure, yes. 
But if there's other transactions that he's involved with, that's where he makes his income to sustain himself. His personal income, right. Personal income. His, yeah. yeah, his current income. Yes. Okay. So he's got the investment side and the IRA in this bucket, and then his real life over here, you know, his, 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 his uh, you know, active income. Active income, okay. And, and then I think we've learned in the past that he probably has to have a, man, a, a property manager to handle his, man, his, his properties. He does. He has to keep it arm's length, but there are a couple things you can do without even having a property manager. So you can kind of manage the properties in your IRA. So what you can do is you can screen the tenants. Obviously, you can select the property. Sure. Sc- screen the tenants. You can um, go to the tenant and collect their rent check. It's made payable to the IRA and then send that check into the IRA. And you can hire third-party vendors to do the work. What you can't do is you can't go swing on the hammers or you know go... Uh, you know, changing out that garbage disposal when it works. You can't do the labor, the sweat equity you're not allowed to do. But again... That would be great for somebody yeah. like me because I don't want to do it and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So now I got somebody I can tell my, I can yeah. tell my wife, you know, I'm not allowed to do this stuff. I well, you know, and, and a lot of people, their IRA doesn't have enough just to buy a property full out. Right. right? So maybe it's two people that go together and, and like they, one person has half, one person has half, whatever it may be. Well, if that's the case, the, the tenant has to make two checks, one to each IRA. And and that's cumbersome because, you know, it's hard enough to get a tenant to write one check, right? Right. So what they do is if they have a property manager, the, they, the tenants write their check to property management. Property management sends it where it needs to ah, go. Ah, okay. So that's how you deal with that. Yeah. Property manager can be the best friend of a self-directed IRA. Definitely. Can a self-directed IRA be, be a partner with anybody? It can. Yes. Yes. So if I had a, a 1031 exchange, could my, could my self-directed IRA be a partner with my 1031? That's you and your self-directed IRA. You want to st- steer clear of that okay. because with a self-directed IRA, you have to prove that you had no personal benefit. Gotcha. Okay. So, so that's, that's against the rules. Against the rules. Okay. Yeah. L- that, see, those are the type of things that we really like to chat about. So especially when we start hearing, because there's, there's a lot in, in pros and cons, right? right? There's a lot of people that are being downsized, right? You know, oh, you've got the, the high yes. net worth individuals yes. that are, or the high income individuals yes. that are being replaced by one or two or three people and, and the companies think that that's the best solution for them. I guess the term is forced retirement be up before sure. someone's ready. And that's what Joe faced. And so this is a solution for forced retirement. It is. So he was he's building his retirement nest egg and it's wonderful. So he's doing he's doing a great job of it. By the way, if you want to know more about the rules of self-directed IRAs on our website at udirectira.com, we have a, a free uh, white paper that you can just, you know, you just go on the website, enter your email address and we'll send you the the Excellent. free white paper. Excellent. So yeah, so you can learn more about the rules and how to do it because it's not just real estate. That's one asset class. But um, I know somebody else, um, and and his name is Aaron. And what Aaron did was he took his little teeny Roth IRA and started making micro loans to mobile home owners, you know, people, people who own mobile homes. Wow! And, and turned a Roth IRA into a million dollar Roth IRA. And and there's a there's a story. Wait, 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 back up. Yeah, I know. Because right? you brought something new to us today. Yes. Okay. So you can have a self directed Roth IRA. Correct. Well, yes, you can have a traditional Roth SEP simple spousal IRA, inherited IRA, all of them can be self-directed. But Roths, the the growth is tax-free for life. Right. There's no cap on how much you can, you know, you can earn from investing in or in an IRA. So you have unlimited tax-free growth in a Roth IRA, assuming that you find the right asset class. So in this case of Aaron here. Yes. I want to pose a couple questions to you about Aaron, but okay. especially when you're talking about because one of the toughest uh, real estate investments or, or properties to lend on, just because of the size of them, is mobile homes and manufactured homes. Right. So we might want to chat further about Aaron and opportunities there. Obviously, we're not looking to give anybody advice. That's not what we do here. But we want to learn from Karin. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets when we come back. The most undervalued cities in America, and we will continue with story time with Karin. <laughs> we can reach us anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. If you miss any part of our broadcast, don't forget it's available. Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living? 
living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Isn't it time you found out the truth about FHA-insured home equity conversion? No, it's not your grandfather's reverse mortgage. This just may be the finest financial planning strategy available for all homeowners of retirement age. Helping protect what you've earned is the job of your board of directors with continued education. Major research has shown that using a HECM will significantly enhance the success rate of a retiree's portfolio and legacy. Please allow us to educate. For your complimentary consultation, call Jay Kaplan at 949-300-3855. That's 949 300 3855. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BREMLS 217037 and 145 and CalBRE 01869452 and 1-866-6 You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. 1990. In the Word on Wealth segment today, brought to you by AskAboutReverseMortgages.com. The question today is Most undervalued cities in America? Well, we look at uh, how do we find the, find the the key findings here? Two newcomers, Fort Collins, Colorado, Augusta, Georgia, got into the top 10 this year. Big cities are overvalued. The biggest cities in the country tend to be the most expensive and residents living in them don't get the most bang for their buck. Hello, Washington, D.C., Boston, San Francisco, San Jose, uh, New York City. If you had a million or billion dollars, if you had no budgetary concerns and only wanted to maximize quality life, the report says... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question this one. The Bay Area, San Francisco, leads the country in projected value per square foot. Well, that's not what they were saying at Chapman University yesterday. So we'll see what uh, comes from those notes. But here are the most undervalued cities. Charleston, South Carolina. Augusta, Georgia was number two. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number three. Overland Park, Kansas, Baltimore, Maryland, Plano, Texas, great city. I I love Plano. It's beautiful. Newark, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Fort Collins, Colorado, 
Providence, Rhode Island. I'm not sure that you want to be. Well, like I guess they're saying the home value per square foot one dollar thirty one point seven five dollar thirty one seventy five one hundred thirty one dollars and seventy five cents. Holy cow! Can't even read the numbers today. That's according to Zillow. So they, how did they determine this? They looked at the home value per square foot according to Zillow. Violent crime rate per hundred thousand residents. High school graduation rate. The number of extreme temperature days, average number of precipitation days per year, walkability, percentage of population with a bachelor's degree or higher, unemployment rate, and entertainment and dining establishments per 100,000 residents. That should have been number one, shouldn't it? Just just a question, right? Not, <laughs> they got the whole formula in here. If you want all the data, just give me a call, 800-306-1990. So we are chatting this morning. Karen Hall is with us. You direct IRA services. And yeah, that's the self-directed IRA. So Karen's got all the information on that. Not an advisor, not as far as a financial advisor. They provide the third-party services, the, the management of the, the asset for you. Because you're you're directing it yourself. You've got to go out there. So if you want the expertise on trying to keep you out of trouble. That's what Karen does, that's what her team does. Do a great job of it, so give them a call over there. And we'll put all her contact information right on our website, links over on the Facebook page. And you can click on all the good stuff there. But you can find, Karen's easy to find. Just Google me. <laughs> Google me. It's there Karen you. with an attitude, K double A. K double A, there we go. R E N, yeah. So we were talking before the break about Aaron, and I don't know what it's... Double A. Double A. <laughs> I don't have the horn sound on here. <laughs> That's funny. But he's uh, in the, he's in this mobile home... Uh, yeah, it's like financing. his business. You know, this is what he's doing for his business. He he's buying mobile home parks, and and you know he was living in an area of the country where there are a lot of mobile home parks. But then he realized, hey, look, I've got this Roth IRA, and so he started lending a little bit, uh, you know, to lending and and uh, getting the return, lending again, getting the return. So he took a small Roth, and again, a Roth IRA, the growth you know, from your investing is tax free for life. So the money comes in after tax when you make a contribution, it's an after tax contribution. It grows tax free for life and it comes out tax free for life when you take a, a, a withdrawal. So how could, how does he market his business? Uh, you know what, I've got an, an entire interview with Aaron on our website, you direct IRA.com in the bottom of our homepage, you'll see a little icon, it says blog talk radio. Okay. And you can listen to that whole interview about how he does that. Um, but I, it was, it was really, he just got to know people. and. and and that's really, I think, the trick of, from what I've learned about real estate investing, is you just talk to people, find out, you know, you know, what's what's going on with you, what, what do you need, and someone says, oh, this is what I need. You find the pain, and and you're the cure, you know. That and it's a win-win. Now, is, will can somebody? Somebody that may be listening to us today, if they were to call you, are you able to put the two together or is no, that not what, what you guys no, do? No, we, we, we're not allowed to recommend okay. investments at all. Okay. And so since I can't uh, recommend, uh, you know, put people with money together with people with opportunities. What I do is I have networking parties so that all those people can come together in a party and have fun. And oh, if they happen to meet and make a deal, you know, then that's what they do. But we're that's having, a, yeah, we're having a networking party in Anaheim. It's uh, at the House of Blues, the new House of Blues. The not, new House of yeah, Blues, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's I think 400 Disney Way or something like that. It's coming up Thursday, June 29th, 5 to 8 p.m., free to go. Uh, so the Garden Walk. Yeah, the Garden Walk, yeah, exactly. There we yeah, go. So, so it's 5 to 8 p.m., show up, you know, bring some business cards cards, get ready to network with real estate investors. Sounds like sounds like fun, but yeah. the two common denominators that I'm hearing, Karen, are both individuals sound to me like they're doing something that they've got a knowledge base in. You have to have a knowledge base. If you're going to uh, self-direct your IRA, you don't want to walk into an asset class that you don't understand because it's self-directed. And we see sometimes people are led into an asset class that they don't understand. And then they're in their world of hurt and they don't understand like how they got there. How'd they blow their retirement? Right, right. And, and, and so let's be very clear that with a self-directed IRA, it's not like when you've got, when you have a financial advisor who's holding your hand, who's taking care of everything for you. We, we can only do so much. We do everything we can, but we're only allowed to do so much because it is self-directed. So you ha you are completely responsible for that asset. And, and and in this day and age, I mean, you've got to really be careful of that. I mean, and I'm, I'm a big proponent of it. I know that there's a place, I believe that there's a place f for a lot of different vehicles, right? I mean, right. the there's financial planners that do a wonderful job. Yes, they do. And there, but and that's for a part of your assets, 
right? You look at something like this, and I would never recommend, again, I don't make recommendations, but I would never suggest somebody put 100% yeah. into anything. I don't think people do that. I mean, what we don't see very many people putting 100% uh, into this. So, But, but I'm wondering, Karin, if it's the reason that they don't put 100% into it is you and I were sharing during the break, or you were sharing with me, because you know this stuff, I don't know it, mm -hmm. that... It's not a really well-known vehicle. It's not. You've been able to self-direct your IRA for 42 years, longer than a lot of the listeners have been alive. Right. But people think it's new, and it's not new at all. What percent? Do you have any idea what percentage of people of the retirement funds are in? Yeah. Well, think about this. Right. Retirement funds. Okay. So it's a pool of about 24 trillion dollars. It's a huge pool of about money. Just a little more than the national debt. Right, yeah, so it's a big, yeah. big, big, big number. True enough, and only about four percent of that money is invested in alternative assets, you know, with self-directed IRA. So it's 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 a it's like the best kept secret. If you're trying to raise capital, do it with self-directed IRAs. If you've got if you're starting a company or if your company needs money, because self-directed IRAs are such a powerful tool to help American companies grow. It's 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 grassroots. It's it's you know neighbor investing in neighbor um, in in their business, and and that's it's a great source of of capital. So that's the sort of the original GoFundMe. It, it really, really is, yeah. <laughs> right, because you can actually go out there and try and get some, uh, some, some capital from people. And again, if you're thinking about doing this for yourself, I can't stress enough. It is important that you're doing your homework. And your homework does not mean going and saying, ah, my neighbor Johnny just bought some Apple stock, so I think I will. <laughs> that's not doing homework. That's, that's gambling. And we do not want to be recommending this for gambling. It's for something like Karin shared with us a couple stories today. People that know what they're doing, they understand a segment. Now, you may be a, a tech wizard. So maybe it's investing in tech stocks or, because you already yeah. know it. Or like a medical doctor. Right. And, and you've got a friend that's coming out with a medical device and, and you t completely believe in it. So you have your IRA invest in it. We see that a lot too. And again, those are, those are some of the issues where you want to put a piece of your holdings in, especially when you're talking about a medical device because you, know, you just don't want to be exposed. You want to, investing don't expose has yourself. Risk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't expose yourself too much. Look yeah. at the amount of risk that you're willing to take. And the other thing I would highly recommend and set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990-800-306-1990 or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun, have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.